All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Crossing Swords. As always, I'm Andrew. And I'm hot off the press to bring you the latest oh, issues shit. that we are talking about today that you will have all heard about, seen about. Maybe you didn't, but you want to after the end of this. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I just want to quickly wind it back to the first thing you said. You are hot today. I said it as you walked in. I said you're Thank looking you. good. Trims, Thank you. I look trims on point. You look... I mean, I don't know if that's an adequate thing to say to someone, but I feel like it, it's, it works you as look a compliment, pressed. right? You look pressed. I mean, it feels like an abbreviation of depressed, like you'd go up to a homeless <laughs> man. You look pressed, man. I am. <laughs> I've been depre- I've been so pressed sad. for years. <laughs> pressed for everything. Time, money, just be like, somewhere to live. It just all started back when I was like, oh, I used to get abused. I'm like, bro, I was just saying you look good. Yeah, right? yeah. I don't want your life story. Chill, bro. Okay, move on. Yeah, I've me- I just meant that as a homeless man, you look all right. You, just meant, you know, for your position, you look pretty good. Yeah, yeah you look don't acceptable. Even, <laughs> don't even get it twisted, okay? But for you, I'm saying you, you look good. You look, you look nice. Thank you, bro. You look good yourself. Don't feel it. Feeling old? No. No. Yeah, well, we are. Welcome yeah. to the age. Everything Welcome creeps. Group. I'm fucking 30. Do you know what I mean? Am I 31? I'm like, what year is it? You are 31, <laughs> my man. I am 31. Because I'm 30. I suddenly just went, fuck, I'm not 30. <laughs> You're in your 30. We're in our 30s. I'm in my 30s. We're in yeah. our 30s. Yeah. My missus keeps making me laugh because she keeps um, saying to me, I'm going to be 30 soon. Um, it's time for you to trade in and get another model. She's offering it up. I'm not even having to... Request it. Can I have the old one? The old one. <laughs> nah, I couldn't let you do it. But I mean, she's offering. No, but she's she'll still be mine. I'm a bit like Andrew Tate in that sense. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, Andrew Tate. I've not got. I've not actually got Andrew Tate on no, the list. No, to be honest, I didn't really know what to write down about him. I mean, we can we've quickly we've cover sort it of now. We su- sort of mentioned him before. Yeah, like, and for me, it was great a opportunity to plug some previous episodes, my man. Yeah, I couldn't tell you what the episode name was, though. So the plug Nor could was, I. No, it was one of our topical ones in the last few weeks, and we only really talked about it in passing, which I think we'll probably do again today. Um, because he's racking up billions of views on TikTok. He's huge. He's getting some air miles. Um, and the thing is, like, I find him, and it's similar to another person we're going to talk about later in the pod, um, I find him entertaining, but I don't agree with a lot of what he says. But it's like, again, it's one of those weird things where every now and again he comes out with something I do agree with. And you're like, oh, actually, that makes sense. But because he is a misogynist and it sounds like he's into some proper dodgy shit, you know, it's Who not really... Who is it? But, like, people are saying it's bad for young boys and that's obviously his main audience is young men, men that are developing, teenagers, a bit older as well. I think it was really bad for young boys. What? The church. <laughs> Yeah, so what's the option, Jake? What do we do? Do we send him to oh, a church Jay or do we send him church, to priests? Church or cage fighting? I mean, it's just it's do you know so what I mean? I mean, he was a good cage fighter. He was very good. Yeah, I'm sure the priests were good priests, but at the yeah. end of the day, they're both damaging the reputation of the young boy. They're both setting him up for a life of misery. But one of my questions is, if someone turns out to be an arsehole because they've been watching Andrew Tate stuff, is it the Andrew Tate stuff making them be an arsehole or is it they were an arsehole and they just sought out the sort of stuff? It's difficult to say, really, because I think we, I think I used to know someone who would like absorb everything from around them. Yeah. So yeah, if they were if they went down like an Andrew Tate rabbit hole, they'd get in that mindset. Yeah. I don't but necessarily I blame Andrew Tate. I don't necessarily blame the person either. No. It's kind of a weird grey area. Well, for me, the people I hold more responsible there are their parents. I know that's probably a bit unfair, but yeah, like, rough to blame if the parents you're a forty year old. No, but if you're if you raised a little misogynist, surely somewhere along the way you got wrong. Now, obviously, there's always exceptions in that I've got them in my family, where or like it, everyone has them in their family where like they've had a lovely life, but they're not a nice person. Do mm. you know what I mean? They they've had a few problems, but nothing that you would go, oh, that's why you're a cunt. Do you know what I mean? No, yeah. But I I feel like in general, the biggest role in all of this is the parents. For the youngsters, because, yeah. Because, like, for me, I can watch Andrew Tate's stuff. Not all of it. I've seen... There's one podcast that I like called uh, Your Mum's House, and he went on that, and that was one of the ones that sort of catapulted him a little bit. But then, where do we stop at parents over-censoring their children? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I've, my overarching point was going to be that, like, for example, I can watch him, and admittedly, I, I think I could have watched him when I was younger and not have absorbed... Because or do you I think was raised by a dad who had very strong ethics. Well, that's what I was going to say. Do you think maybe the women, the respect better, to everyone? The better suggestion is that be aware that your kids may be watching this stuff. And I think this is a. I do think this is on parents and guardians, regardless, and and teachers and all kinds of societal role models um, to educate the kids better, so that at mm. least if these kids are going to watch these Andrew Tate videos, at yeah. least they're having an alternative 
yeah. education and, and then just if they choose to go down the Andrew Tate role then they're a dick like but I they've f- had the opportunity to learn I completely respect. agree and I feel like as a parent in general those should be conversations that should be going on mm. like sort of on it should never be like let me sit down my son and have the, that was never what it was with my dad it was just it was through his actions he would say it but it could be like I might have said something rude to my mum and he would have like sat me down and be like look that's your mum treat her with respect you know and lay it out for me and the same with my sister any woman and he did it in general with everyone you is that why you treat your mum like shit now because your dad's not here to put you <sighs> down I can't confirm or deny that to be honest <laughs> um, no but like I just feel like it should be a given that parents should be doing that and I think if lots of men are falling into this category now I don't know where the failure is I feel and like I'm not putting well, it all at the parents door I think it's societal as well I think it's part of the effect of demonising men and men, male characteristics. And well, I think as well, um, just to go down a, a, a slightly slightly different route, but obviously that's sort of what we do here, yeah. right? Um, I think one of the trap holes that a lot of people and parents and whatever fall into when raising their sons, and let's, let's talk about like yeah. the raising the males, a lot of them fall into that trap of, asso- of assigning women value based on their role in their life so sort of okay. like you say it'll be like you know you shouldn't be rude to her because she's your mum not because she's a, a woman or a human being mm. it's like that's your mum and that's your sister and then what happens is later in life you get a lot of these guys come out and defend or you know sort of attack people who are being sexist and misogynistic yeah. and their thing is that's someone's mum that's someone's sister that's someone's yeah. daughter and it's like their value doesn't come from their relation to some male that you might respect mm. do you know what i mean do it's you think like, that's the majority though because i don't know but i think is. i think it's a trap hole that a lot yeah. a lot are falling into not a majority okay. but an awful lot do fall and into. i think in a similar vein it's people wanting to be seen as saying the right thing as well or do you know what i mean the it's sort, sort of, like of virtue think, signaling a little bit they think the only way i can get through to my son and teach him to respect mm. women is if i make it personal to him yeah. And I understand that, but the danger yeah. is then you're saying she only matters because of what she is in relation to you, and then he'll associate yeah, that by I've saying that she only has value if I can picture her as having a relation to another man. You know, she's yeah, someone's no, daughter, she's someone's sister, whatever. But I think you follow up that with the additional information, don't you? Like, you don't just say because she's your mum, you say because she does this, this, and this for you. And, like, you Absolutely, add in the I, layers. But I think, like I said, I think a lot of people are falling into that trap. But, and also just a fundamental lesson that I think we all get told growing up, which is treat others how you would like to be treated. And, and it's the golden rule, like, we should all go back to it. We should yeah, always, and, and always all go back to it. It does feel like we're living in a world at the moment where that isn't going on. No, it's a very divided world. And, and yeah. do you know what you always find in in, a, in hard economic times that kind of shit gets even worse. Oh, absolutely. And we are every, facing it's hard every economic man times. for himself in that situation, yeah. isn't it? And you see it. We saw it during COVID. People um, stockpiling food and resources and then people without the money to be able to do that and elderly people mm. were left in really tricky situations. Yeah, mm. agreed. No, I think we covered um, Andrew Tra- Tate fairly well there. Do you know what? I, I thought about... Um, Downloading one of his like sound bites to play, and I thought, now nah, fuck him, he's not worth it. He's the not. Effort. He's really not. Um, I guess we could move on to Alex Jones. Sure, because I know it's something you wanted to talk Absolutely, about. I haven't got was, a lot. Of notes. A I've, I've watched a few bits of like the trial and thing like things it like was that. A phenomenal, so. phenomenal trial. Watching, I sort of like got the updates. Not like every day, but every yeah. few days, I'd get the updates, and it was just fucking beautiful. It's a beautiful yeah. thing to watch. So for those that don't know. Alex Jones is a kind of, he's certainly become in recent years this like big, you know, he he was one of the early ones who took advantage of the internet and being able to have an alternative oh, okay. fan base, you know, a non-mainstream fan base. And he's very, very right wing. If you think like mm. Fox News, Tucker Carlson, all that kind of like, let's be angry at the world, but let's be angry at the world because it's too like PC and woke and it's too liberal and all that yeah. kind of shit. That's the kind of stance he kind of... It's weird though, because like if you listen to him, he thinks he's standing up for everyone. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. he sees he's providing a public service. Yeah. Um. So that's the thing. Like he would disagree with everything you just said because he thinks he's doing it for other people, despite the fact he's raking in. Rid- I had no idea how much money that man was making. Well, yeah, that's part of what the trial sort of yeah. unfolded. But so the thing is, so Sandy Hook elementary school is a is a preschool in i think connecticut yeah um not preschool uh, elementary school in in connecticut that was subject to a mass shoot in some years back yeah and alex jones used his show and his platform 
to say that it was a hoax. Yes. That all the parents, the grieving parents, were all actors, and it was all a ploy so that the government can take away your guns. Yeah. And one of the parents, you know, and as as we know, these people who follow these kind of like non-mainstream white right wing mm. news sources they're very loud people yeah they're they're the ones that will actually go and be quite aggressive and quite mm. not necessarily they won't necessarily like knock on your door and start trying to burn you yeah but they will hound you electronically they will send you letters and all this kind of yeah. shit and the parent of one of the victims sued alex jones because he said you spread this fake information yeah that he has since come out and admitted it, it was fake, yeah, that, yeah. that the incident was real, it did take place, and he sort of his defense was like, Look, I'm paying that price every day, mm. kind of thing, for knowing what I did almost. And she's like, No, man, I got like a shit ton of abuse yeah. by your followers because you said it was fake. Yeah. And then no matter what I do, I'm always in the wrong. Because as far as they're concerned, I'm a government stooge. Yeah. It doesn't matter what I do or say. Just, like, and this is just a question, doesn't mean I've, I have an opinion either way. Is that. N- he bears some responsibility that people go, but I d- he didn't directly go, all my followers go and abuse these people. Do you know what I mean? No, but equally, he knows what kind of followers he has, mm. I think, and he has a responsibility to Do you think people are that. completely aware of that? Again, it's just a question. I do. Okay. I do, especially for people like Alex Jones, and, and he, I think he's a very I mean, intelligent... I he must do to double, in, double down on the sort of content he provides. He's a very... He's, he's, to his credit, he's a very intelligent chap. You know, like I said, he, he, was, is, he, was, he is very He was very early on pioneering that mm. alternative And the thing scene. is, he is, again, a, he was the person I was referring to earlier, he is entertaining to watch when he, like, has a rant or he can be quite articulate and um, very good at telling a story. Um, yeah. So I find, I, I've seen him on Joe Rogan because they've known each other for a long time. He's been on it a couple of times. Um, and they've actually removed his episodes from Spotify, I believe. Have they? Yeah. You can only find them on YouTube on Joe Rogan's Is that channel. for spreading false information? Uh, no, they did it like when they were importing all of his content. Um, they just went through it, and any ones that they just really had an issue with, they would um, just not have on their platform. Yeah, that's He fair. still has them on his, um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, the trial was a magnificent piece of work. Yeah, I only saw little bits of it. I didn't commit any real... I didn't really have the time to sit and watch a lot of it. So one of the things that came out of it, is, uh, as you t- touched upon, was that um, where the victim was claiming um, compens- uh, you know, uh, compensation, compensation, yeah, damages, he said, well, I, I can't pay you because I'm bankrupt. Yeah. And the judge had to point out that, no, you're absolutely fucking not. No. Uh, he's worth millions. Because he's like closing down the parent company or something, isn't he? Or that's going into bankruptcy. Yeah, because he's, yeah, he's yeah, basically he's he's got like side hustles that sell like gun paraphernalia and um Oh really? Uh merchandise and there's something else that sells. Hang on, I've got it here. Workout supplements. There's they're like the gun paraphernalia really? and workout supplements and they're raking Despite in. the fact he's got no credibility but in the fitness field whatsoever. None at all. Like he's Other less than fit than both of us combined. Joe and yet <laughs> He is, they're raking in a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, he was called out for lying three times during the trial. Yeah, I saw that. Including one where they asked, the prosecution asked, did you go on your show last night and show a picture of the judge in flames? And he just sat there and went, no, absolutely and not. And then up. they brought up the picture. Well, the and thing it was is, like, why is he doing that? They also he, they also showed a clip of him saying that the jury was full of people who didn't know what planet they were on. <laughs> and his defence was, he said, well, you could be pulling that out of any kind of context. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I mean, in his defence, like, legally, Technically that is true. a sound defence. Yeah, yeah, defense. but it's probably not relevant it's pretty in ropey. this situation. It's pretty ropey. <laughs> um, yeah, caught out lying a lot, which was good. Um, and the reason that they knew he was worth so much money, by the way, yeah, was because the defence council. Oh, I heard about this. Yeah, sent on two years worth of mobile phone data <laughs> yeah, they sent the over, to to it, they? over to the prosecution, over to the prosecution, and then didn't do anything. And they actually responded saying, "Like, do you realise what realize you've you sent, sent us?" This? And they were like, "I'll oh, just ignore that one. We'll send you the relevant one." But they sent two years worth of phone data, <laughs> including all the texts and stuff that showed just how much he was worth and showed that yeah. he actually when he was saying oh, I really care and I'm paying the price and whatever it showed yeah. that he absolutely doesn't and also it included medical notes which I don't think bore any real 
relevancy to the trial from what I could tell. But the one that did bear trial was they sent their strategic notes. So that they sent the defence's notes for how they were going to handle it, what points they were going to use yeah, and what, yeah. what defence so they were going to use. Fuck they just over. absolutely handed it over to a plate on the prosecution who won, by the so way. So let me ask about, because I saw all that and my first question was, do you think this is a stitch up? Like from his lawyer team, his legal team have gone, do you know what, let's just pretend to be idiots and just make sure he has no chance whatsoever of... Maybe I know this sounds really because that like you don't hear of really that sort of shit happening, so it could just be a freak accident. I mean, this is an interesting conspiracy theory about a conspiracy theory. Well, I've, it's really conspiratorial, but I do wonder whether maybe it was a deliberate. The whole thing was deliberate because no matter how much he pays in damages, the free advertising that mm, the court absolutely. will have got him, absolutely. and that the and whole the fact that his his defense team were absolutely shocking and he can go on his show and go as a fucking stitch up yeah, yeah, yeah he'll get so many people coming into his show do you think he's planned i'm that wondering that whether answer. actually he's done the maths and he's worked out that i'll make more money by losing the trial than i will by you know Mate, saving the money like from winning it this is conspiracies within conspiracies it's, about good, conspiracy it's, good, theorist. It? it's conspiracyception yeah mate i, I mean like i said i what do the you floor. think what about that in particular? Well, all of it, yeah, that or your own um, I mean, obviously the guy's a fucking idiot in terms of coming out with that the shooting was fake. Um, but, like, I can understand... To, it's difficult, like, it's inexcusable. Like I said, I think he bears some responsibility in terms of his audience's action. Um, in terms of the conspiracy theory about him... I could see that it was, but I could. I, I think it's more likely a stitch up, like not necessarily from his entire legal team, but someone in their team went, "No, we're going to fuck him over." Like a like a, a, um, le- a paralegal or a junior, yeah, yeah, just yeah. Went, it's just gone. I don't. I can't care believe about we're defending this guy. This guy's a guy. prick. Yeah, um, and I could see that happening. Or maybe um, it was someone who who has been affected by a, a school shooting or a mass shooting. Very possible. And took I mean, particular grievance. enough of them. Yeah, and there's took particular grievance with that issue and sort of went... Like, what makes me laugh about his his argument in terms of, like, they would make up the school shooting to take away your guns. It's like, mate, there's enough of them there's to nothing. not need there's to... Nothing. There's and enough evidence in their country that they should not have the what amount makes of guns me laugh that they do, and they don't care. I've not got it as a talking point with me, just to mention it, is that... There's a school in Texas, and it might even be a district in Texas, yeah. that have banned the reading of Anne Frank in school <laughs> because they said that the kids are too young to really learn about it <laughs> or understand it. <laughs> and it's like, oh, but they're old enough to do active shooter drills yeah, yeah, yeah. and to face, like, what is wrong with this country? And so many things. But well, I guess the way the Americans look at it, they're far more likely to run into a situation where they're going to get killed at school for no reason well, and the Holocaust happens to them. And also I mean? quite conspiratorially, someone suggests, I did see a couple of people suggesting that, well, if they're going to stop you learning about the horrors of World War Two and mm. the Holocaust, it suggests that they're planning something akin to it or they're going to use similar tactics. See a conspiracy Not necessarily to the say, full death and murder, but certainly to the oppression of minority groups. Yeah, I think... Which is happening anyway. I, f- I mean, part of me thinks, and it's the conspiracy theorist in me, that... Um, there is a big conspiracy theorist in you. They, the reason they wouldn't want you to learn about those sort of things is because they don't want you to see the consequences of blind obedience. Yeah, yeah. Because um, there is an argument out there that through things like face masks, and I don't necessarily agree with it because I think face masks served a purpose, um, but there is an argument from people that it's to make you more comfortable with restrictions being put on you with. And I think I can absolutely believe a state or a government wanting to shape a narrative in a way that you don't think about the consequences of just following what they say. Yeah. Um, But the Alex Jones thing, I mean, the more money they take from him, the better. He's not going to go bankrupt because of it. He's making, like they're saying, he's making around 800 grand a day sometimes. Yeah, although he Um, he would counter that. Yeah, I'm sure he would, but it's it's everywhere at the moment. Do you know what I mean? If it was just like a little bit of a rumor, but it's being confirmed everywhere that he makes silly money. Yeah. It's not known exactly how much every day, but it's a lot. Um, and ultimately, like you say, I think he's just going to get more publicity from him. If, if anything, it's served him. I think because the think people that well. love him will love him even more now, and they'll be even more. And they'll into say, it. and then what they'll say is they'll say, "Well, it was a stitch up. He called him out mm. on their." 
government set up. Yeah. And now they've stitched him up and sent him down as a result. Yeah. That's what you get for speaking out. Do you think he would have less support if he wasn't deplatformed? Um, do you think he would have... Do, sorry, do I think he'd have less support yeah. if he wasn't yeah. deplatformed? Um, no. Do you? I think a little bit. I think more of the solution should be... Because he's so... The problem is it's a double-edged sword because you don't want to give him pub- publicity, but I think you need to go through shit that people like that talk about. Because one of the biggest problems is people not having enough information. And I think a lot of the people that follow people like him think he's credible and use him as like a news source. Oh, God, yeah. Um, And the alternative, to be honest with you nowadays, isn't much better. Like traditional news sources like your news channels and newspapers aren't reliable anymore. And I think that's why people end up going over to people. Because you see ridiculous examples like I watch a show called New Amsterdam and the episode really pissed me off. That this whole like the hospital drama, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a decent show, but the, the recent season, like he's been trying to take on a different, like entire world problem from his hospital by himself, like taking on systemic racism and things like that. But in this episode, it was to do with the vaccine, and this entire block of people had taken a unregistered vaccine from this random because none of them had internet because it was in a black zone in New York. And uh, they ended up just taking this bloke at his word. He gave them like a pamphlet of what it gave them and they all ended up ill. And it was like, the uh, the moral of the story was if we educate these people better, this wouldn't happen. Um, and I think that's sort of the case with Alex Jones, that people haven't got an alternative. They're not being guided in the right way. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I think some people, they want their stance to be against the mainstream. So if you educate them yeah. as the mainstream, they want... Well, then maybe the mainstream it. needs to branch out. But how does it do that? Because it'll always be the mainstream. Or maybe be a silent partner in funding other news yeah, projects. Maybe. and. But it's got to be credible. Well, yeah. But you, I guess you just, I'd say run it the same way you do already. But I mean, in terms of what traditional journalism is, you have researchers, you have a proper editor that holds it to an... But then if I'm saying the traditional media needs to do that, they're just going to use that as a puppet as well. Yeah. Uh, so basically what we need is someone who's really rich uh, to set up a brand new news organisation with really high standards that just reaches people on a new level. Sure, I mean... It's pretty really simple. Easy, really it's really easy. Easy. Really easy. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, it's a theme that's running through a lot of things at the moment that the uh, we're on in such a negative place in general with so many different things. It feels like the only way to turn that around is seismic change. It's radical ideas. Mm. And it just sounds ridiculous to talk about, to suggest anything. And like, and one of the things that's annoying me at the moment, or that has annoyed me recently, is this rise in support for nationalisation and things like that. I'm all for nationalisation. But what annoys me is a few years back now, we had a general election where we had two choices. We had a choice between a party that was offering exactly what we've got now or a party that, yes, didn't have the best leader, but was offering exactly what we're asking know, I, for now. I, and, it, and it really makes me angry. I sort of said a couple of weeks ago that, it, you know, to me it will always make me laugh and cry, yeah. sort of simultaneously. Yeah. The fact that every single headline that they used to knock down, because the media was very much against Jeremy yeah. Corbyn, we know that. Yeah. Every single headline that was used against Jeremy Corbyn's government mm. has now turned out to be a stark truth Mm. of this government they're like we're gonna have it's like if you elect um jeremy corbyn they'll be like uh union strikes all over the country it's like well we're literally in the middle of one of the biggest union actions in a long time across the board across industries yeah, we're, we're headed towards a summer of discontent or something like that i was listening. yeah there's, li- there's literally like the or a winter of discontent sorry we're, we're already on like the sixth or seventh day of rail action yep. from one union we've got teachers planning the strike we've got nurses are talking um, about airport it. staff already been on strike um or at least threatened to go on strike nurses are talking about going on strike and nurses never go on strike because no. they care too much about their patients and that's why they've gotten by the short well it's that or they die <laughs> but you've got yeah it literally like every fucking industry is talking yeah. about strike action and okay so you can tick that one off the box that turned out to be more of a, mm. a boris government thing or t- a tory thing let's not even break it down you had labor offering um they said oh the you know there'll be electricity blackouts it's mm. like well excellent because we're now actually facing a winter of blackouts to yeah. handle the you know the the crap that we're dealt with 
yeah. in the fuel situation. It's like, okay. Um, what else was there? There was there was a few others, and it was like literally every headline that's been. Yeah. It's like that's. But the things were in a situation where there was a. And we're talking the the media, by the way. Sorry, it's still in support right. of it. I've literally read two articles or two headlines today, and I won't name the papers, but they're yeah. they're papers that have supported Boris and have supported this government the and do. Um, and they were saying one of them was saying you may have seen these articles. One of them was saying actually why it's a good thing to feel hunger pangs. <laughs> you're, you're joking. You're actually joking. And there was another one to do with again, um, blackouts. They were like, you know, it it could be the most romantic time of, you know, it could be a really romantic time yeah, if you yeah, utilize yeah. it. Like, so what we're saying is, it's great to have no power and no food. Let's try and spin it that way. <laughs> yeah, shocking. Yeah, there's a nobility and poverty is what they're trying to yeah. spin. Um, whilst they're all lapping up champagne and yeah. caviar and driving really nice cars. And in a really warm house when they go home. Yeah, and if that one runs out of energy, they just move to the other one. Yeah. That we're paying for. Yeah, what makes me laugh, though, is we're in a situation where a paper can take the current situation we're in and say this is what it would look like under a Labour government. This happened recently. I can't remember what what it was, but it might have even been the strikes. And it was like, the future under a Labour government. And James O'Brien was like, but it's happening now. Yeah. And it's happened under the Tories. How on earth is that a representation of what life would be like under Labour. Now, look, I'm not saying everything would have been perfect under Jeremy Corbyn, but there's no doubt in my mind, and I've said it before, that we wouldn't be better off now than we are, and it would be to a considerable degree. I've said this before. The thing that really pisses me off with people about this, and they go, oh, yeah, but the other side's like, you know, the other side's not much better. It's like, no, 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 you stop looking for a perfect opposition. Stop looking for the perfect government. That doesn't exist. Let's just start with getting a better one than we've got yeah. now, right? It might and still we'll work be, from there. We might not still be in the perfect situation, but we'll be better off than we are now. Let's yeah. just maybe use that as a start. Yeah. And that's what really pisses me off about that. Yeah. One of the things we've talked about at the moment as well, and it's one of the things I wanted to talk about was, and we've talked about him before, is uh, Sabir. Sabir. Sabir Starmer. Um, is he failing? Human bollard. Is he failing? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I think... He's been quiet, yeah, too quiet. Mm. Like Gordon Brown has come out and done more. <laughs> Gordon Brown, a man who's not been involved in politics for what Quite seven years, yeah. six years, has come out and done more, yeah, for Labour than the, than leader the of actual Labour. leader of yeah. Labour has, um, yeah. which is quite worrying, isn't it? It's in, it's I'm I've been supportive of him in the past, and I still think. I hope he's better than what we've got. He's I, there's definitely no doubt. Better than no what we've doubt. Got, but he is, n- like, it, it seems obvious to me, and I'm not the most politically savvy person in the world, but that he should be on every talk show, every yeah, radio station. Yeah, we've said this before. Every time Boris has fucked up, he should be everywhere. Him and his yeah, cabinet should be everywhere. From now until the next general election, he should be on television or the radio every single day talking about where can the. Can, like, at the moment, there is literally no leadership in this country, and I understand everyone needs a holiday, but he has an opportunity just in the gap while Parliament's out to be the voice. And of I think, I think the thing, the reason why he isn't, is because one of the things, the one of the really obvious things, is going to get thrown back at him yeah. when he says this government's doing shite and the country's gone to shite under this government. Mm. They'll go, well, what are your plans to do it? How would you handle yeah, it? And he doesn't have an answer. Why don't to that. they already have that? I don't know. He's been in charge for a while now. Um, and the, and we have heard now what his plan is for the uh, energy crisis, which is to freeze the prices and then. Um, oh, what was the other part of it? Did you see what it he was? He wanted to. He wanted to fund a kind of. Oh, almost like a rebate scheme yes. where you kind of yeah, yeah. just get a little bit of money off it. Yeah, basically. A little bit of help towards it, um, and that would bring down inflation as well. Mm. Um, and there's a provision in there for small businesses for them to get a bit of help. But the as the guy said to me, he was like, "But it doesn't go." Far enough. No. You're not saving anyone. The um, amount of small businesses closing after getting their latest energy bills yeah. is insane. If you just type in any area mm. around the country and type in small business close, yeah. you will see it from a local paper or a local website, mm. a news article that lists another business that's closed after it just got a huge energy bill. Yeah. And I just... I can't understand why nothing is happening. Do you know what I mean? No. Like, I can't understand why, like, what blew my mind was, because they said we wouldn't have a new Prime Minister till September, at, like, the earliest. 
I was like, all right. And then the process to get to the final two felt like it happened incredibly quickly. Yeah, and then it gave him the summer recess to vote. Yeah, and I'm like, why do they need that? Well, it's fine to have that, but if Boris Johnson is refusing to leave, Mm. and he is refusing to leave. But also not doing his job. He can, at the very least, he can do his his job till he goes. But people are arguing that he it's unlikely he has the support to get anything through. But I disagree. I disagree. It's, it's about the better of the country. If he puts mm. forward a genuine plan to help people... Yeah. But the thing is, even if he was going to do something, he's not going to do that. No. Um, and and we're just stuck in this limbo of nothing's happening. Everything's and then when the new Prime Minister worse. comes in, it's going to take a bit of time for them to get anything through. Yeah, and to be honest, what both of the options are offering isn't going to solve the situation either. No. So we're just... As I said to you when they first announced the that Boris was going, one second. <coughs> what concerned me was we're looking at not just a few months until stuff stuff starts happening. We're looking at a year plus because, like you say, they've got to get their feet under the table. They've got to appoint their cabinet. Also, they've got to start sitting down with them making plans. That doesn't happen overnight. And also, what the the danger of what could happen is when they get in, they might have a couple of months of um, actual work w- which they won't do neither of these strike me as people who are going to do that but let's no. be fair to them and let's say right they're going to get in and they're mm. really going to try and help the country which they won't they're Tories no. not how it works but let's say they do they yeah. get in they're trying to help the country <laughs> well after only a couple of months which isn't really enough to help anyone they're back on the campaign trail yeah. and rather than trying to make policies that are making a difference in people's lives that may not always be popular with everyone but are genuinely trying to make a difference <coughs> they're just concerned with trying to do and say whatever they can that would win over the public because they know. I mean, I was speaking to someone recently who lives, lived, sorry. I was speaking to someone recently whose mum lives in Matt Hanscott's constituency. Now, I don't actually know where that is, but she was saying to him that she said in the whole time that he's been MP, she's like, I've literally never seen him. No. But he's been out door to door, like at the surgery, mm. really promoting it. There's been let's go free stand. I'm doing open surgeries today. To, I'm not not actual like literally in the no, hospital no, open no, surgeries. That'd be quite worrying. But people have come talk to him and he's he's really getting his face about because I think there's a real fear amongst the Tory party looking at Liz Truss, who's likely to be the next prime minister, yeah. is that she ain't going to win us a general election or no, she might lose it. I don't think Keir's going to win it, but she might lose it. Yeah, I've, the problem is that, and suddenly a lot of seats are up for grabs. I would argue they're not trying to win over the general public at the moment. I would no, say right they're now only they're winning not. over their own No, their right own now they're not. Because if you look at just what Liz Truss is saying, for example, doubling down on the fact we have the laziest workers in the world, basically. Um, well, when she, it was when she came out and said, um, I can't remember what the policy was, but she released a policy. Oh, um, it and was the pay structure for public sector. Oh, was it divvying it up amongst? Well, basically what it was. So if you live you, in the South East or less, London, less you're, in fine, you're not going to lose yeah. any money because your cost of living <coughs> is higher. But you live anywhere outside of London, basically, or the South East. Yeah, your pay goes your down. Your pay will go down. And then they, and they were like... doctors, nurses, and literally local council Everyone workers. was like, that's horrendous, that's ridiculous. Mm. And then she was like, well, I never said that. And they were like, you, it was yeah, literally yeah. your policy. And she was like, no, 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 you took it out. You... You know, it wasn't actually a no. policy. It's like, well, then why did you release it as a policy? And the truth means nothing She to these is people, just a female Boris Johnson yeah, with less affairs. Yeah, these people. Although I was reading, allegedly... Oh, Paul Green or whoever it is, yeah. Yeah. So she is just like Boris Johnson. Yeah, she is, she is having affairs. And the thing is, you just have to look at her political movements on a very broad scale. Um, you don't even need to, need, need to go deeply into her career. Started off as a Lib Dem. Moved to the Conservative Party, was a staunch Remainer, and then as soon as it became politically expedient, jumped on Brexit's the best thing ever bandwagon. And she just says whatever it takes to, to win um, a room. To win a room, yeah. yeah. Whatever's politically expedient. And that's and that's exactly how I would describe Boris Johnson as well. Um, so yeah, it's not great. Yeah, and not to mention her cheese speech, which went down really well. The what one? The cheese speech. <laughs> Yeah, that is a disgrace. disgrace. I'll have to get that. Um, and she might as well. Bite. She might as well have just said pause for hold for applause. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean. There was that. But it was to look at like she's almost a pantomime character when you watch her on stage. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Rishi, I just feel like he's lost. There's like zero credibility left in that man, and I feel like at least everyone's seeing that. 
Because like the fact he could go to a rally and get filmed saying that basically, if I get in power, I'm going to take all the money from all the poor shitty areas. Yeah, why have we given and I'm it up among them? I'm going to put it back into your into yours. So what you're saying about the pantomime thing reminded me of I came I came across a, an old Tim Vine joke the other day. It's bad, but mm. do you want to hear it? Yeah. Um, he says when I, I first time I did pantomime, I was the back end of a wasp. I thought I was the bee's knees. <laughs> That's dreadful. And then also, just on Rishi Sunak, have you seen the uh, first, the video of him trying to pay by contactless at like a garage? Oh, the one at McDonald's where it's already been paid? No, no, no. no, no, The 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 one at the garage. It's the first time he's ever seen. And he uh, picks up a chocolate bar and like a can of Coke and just holds it up to the screen in between yeah, him yeah, and the guy and he's like, what it, happens it now? Great. He's so, so he clearly doesn't never even, done He's it. never done any shopping in his life. No, he's so And clearly, then he tries it. to pay by contactless and he presses it on like the plastic screen in front of him. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And then the guy's like, no, 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 it's, it's down great. here. And then he's like, what, here? And then it's so it's awkward. Brilliant. Yeah. And then he tried to do this like redemption picture on, uh, t- like, on everything of him uh, going to McDonald's and paying. But the best part was... The he'd order's already, already been paid. placed, yeah, and he's holding it, and it's already like, paid. Mate. And then he's asked about it and makes the lovely mistake of going, yeah, I take my kids to McDonald's all the time. They always get a breakfast wrap, and it's like, mate, it's been gone mate, two brilliant. years. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, yeah, that's years. good. That's solid. I didn't know that one. That's good. Yeah, that's and good. it's just like, mate, you're just... You're not a man of the people. You don't know what Well, it's not even want. that. You're just like, there's no credibility there whatsoever. No credibility. But the thing is, it feels like it transcends... Across the board, there's not many politicians that I've seen so far that I think have a huge amount of credibility. No, yeah, it's not good. And like one of the people I wanted to talk about, and most people won't know who this person is, but it's Elliot Colburn. And Elliot Colburn is our local MP in Carshorton and Wallington. And I couldn't, like I was, he comes into where I work fairly regularly, actually. Um, and like I have to resist the urge every time I see him of just going like, what happened? Like, because he grew up around the corner from where we're recording right now. I imagine his parents were probably working class. There should have been some values there, and I just don't see it. No, he like, he quickly threw them all away for... Um, uh, just to be an MP. And was, I get it. He's got 80 grand a year now, plus. He was, like, then, supporting Boris a couple of years ago, and then now it's gone to pot. He isn't supporting Boris. He's against Boris. No, and, and like, like, he got a lot of support in the local area because he publicly came out and condemned Boris, but that was after silently doing it. And as I said previously on another episode, the guy had no issue standing as a representative of Boris Johnson. And I decided, because I thought, I don't want to be really unfair to him. I went, I've went, i gone back through like a few months of his social medias on Facebook, Twitter, just to see if I could find anything about the cost of living crisis, which would Nothing. be the Nothing. number one issue for any MP across the country at the moment. Not a one. He goes on about this U, U11 thing, the ultra-low ultra emission, low emission zone. Le- yeah. He bangs on about that a lot. Everything else is just a publicity photo. Oh, I went to Chris and Jack's Barbers. Um, for people who don't know, it's like a really I used, to go, to, I used to go to Chris and Jack's. I used to go there. I think they're retiring. They're, they are retiring. That mm. was why he did it. But he got his hair cut. And, but everything's promotional, going to visit the local school or, you know. At least he's doing it in his normal suit. He's not doing a Boris but, and going full dress up. In my head, he won very by a very small majority i think it was by like 2000 votes yeah it wasn't really a, lot. Isn't he, a lot he only just ousted the lib debt yeah and we had them. tom breaking for a long time i can't remember it was like 97 i guess he yeah. just got into that election yeah so it was At 20 years Blair wasn't election, it so yeah um 2022 and i to be honest with you i don't think an awful lot of tom break but in general most people tend to agree that he did a decent he did a lot for the area i think uh he fought a lot for our local hospital which they've tried to close down a few times and they've tried to shut the a and e department yeah. and reduce and it and then the child and baby ward as well i think they've tried to get yeah. rid of before i don't even know if um, that's still there i think they might have actually got rid of that i think it I might think have merged right. with another yeah i think you're right another one in the trust um but he did a good job, um, and I know Elliot has also continued to campaign. Oh, our, Elliot hospi- as well. our hospital, St. Elliot, by the way, that's mm. been, oh, I mean, I was born there. Yeah, I was born Were there. you born there? So it's been, it's been there for a long time. Yeah. That's one of the 40 new hospitals. No. Well, it's, it's, it has it's, had some, it's had some refurb. Oh, it's had it's scaffolding had outside refurb. for a long time. It's one of the 40 new hospitals. It was, I mean, this is a bit of a, it was being refurbed when my dad died. Because I remember, like, my dad being in this room and, like, drilling noise everywhere and we had to get him moved. Because it was just like, how could you do that? <laughs> well, they've got to do it sometime. Though. No, like, absolutely. But it. it's just, like, if you're really unwell, it's yeah. just not an ideal Probably situation, everyone, in, everyone is in hospitals unwell. Um, no, well, exactly. It's, all there. it's not ideal. It's not ideal. No, no, um, no, no. I, I'd have done the same. Uh, but, yeah, so going back to Elliot, 
And I just think to myself, like, it's very unlikely he's going to keep his seat next time around, right? Yeah. So he doesn't really need to worry about burning bridges unless he genuinely thinks he has a chance. But in my head, I'm like, you should be spending every day up until now building up credibility and actually standing for something. Because he doesn't at the moment. He stands for nothing. He's one of the young MPs that stand for whatever the party tells he, him to stand yeah, for. And he's a young MP who should be believing in all of these things because they're not radical things. It shouldn't be left or right. Let people have enough. Don't overcharge them for their bills. They should be able to afford food. We've just discussed before the very basic rights that like you would like roof over your head, be able to heat it, be able to eat, maybe go on a holiday, but you know. But he doesn't stand for any of it. He doesn't give a shit. I've not seen anything from him and i think it's fucking disgusting honestly and any mp who isn't addressing it publicly yeah agree i just think it's proper shit so yeah elliot Cole on either side of the you can go fucking do one yeah get stuffed i think is the uh, yeah i've got to fucking find it though bro i was too busy ranting get stuffed yeah there you go from the fucking leader yeah from the man himself (laughs) yeah yeah fair enough yeah sorry i went on a bit of a no no i like it i dig it it's sexy when you rant yeah, and like the things, he could be a lovely person. I don't know what he's like. I mean, I went to school with him. I didn't know him well. He was a couple of years. That's, that's the other depressing thing. He is a couple of years younger than me. Yeah, for sure. Um, but like, I don't remember him being a bad person at school. He always seemed nice enough. But yeah, absolute shit bag. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, Give me something positive, Jack. <laughs> well, I don't, have, I don't have a lot of positive. I'll tell you what I can do. We briefly touch on the Trump raid. The Trump? Oh yeah, you can do. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, I don't know a huge amount about Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida got raided by the FBI. Isn't it because basically they think he's leaked documents? Yeah, taking documents home. Basically, there's like a, you know, is this whilst president? So when he was president, he had access to all these documents. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So he took legally, them home. they should stay in a government building. That's okay. the official thing. Um, well, yeah, because otherwise he you... took some of them home. Yeah. Um, my favorite thing. One of my favorite things was that he, because this was also reported from some of his, some of his aides as the way he dealt with some documents whilst in the White House, mm. was that he would flush them down the toilet. Yeah. Um, and apparently that was a similar case in Mar-a-Lago, a place that has nineteen fireplaces, which is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> but my favorite. Why would you flush? Like them my down favorite. The well, my favorite thing is like literally. The uh, dissolves, uh, I guess. A bit of a bit more foreign. Um, service mm. would have taught him that because anyone who's been on holiday to Greece knows you don't put paper down the toilet no you don't that's a very good point so if he'd have just done a little bit more travelling a little bit more work abroad he'd have <laughs> he that known, yeah. he'd have known you don't put paper but down also the like I've never seen a spy movie when like when they're like alright scrap the operation everyone's like to the bathroom <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's always to a shredder fireplace. <laughs> There's like a, a, always a furnace in the room for yeah, some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why these people have big grand houses with fireplaces. Yeah, so, yeah, they, can so burn they can burn the important documents. Them and people. Or the incriminating documents. Yeah. From not the same year. Yeah, Throw another kid on the barbie. Throw another. And do you know what I find? Yeah, it's just a, it was all just quite good. And then he came out on TV and his family came out on TV. <laughs> and like, it's ridiculous. Also, my favourite thing. Because he's saying like, uh, what's he saying about it? Like, well, he's like, I've never committed a crime in my life. <laughs> they found like five <laughs> boxes of documents, by the way. But w- this is a man who's hired prostitutes. No, he's they can't grabbed women by their uh, proverbials. They can't officially. They can't tell us what the documents were, but they found <laughs> well, no. five boxes of documents, including quote unquote top secret material. Yeah, that is like for the eyes of the president only. <laughs> so he has taken shit home. I got to admit, bro. If I was the president, first of all, I'd want to see the secret library. I believe the hype. Have you seen National Treasure? Yeah, I've seen National Treasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believe there's a secret library. And that would, my first trip would be like, guys, after you give me the nuclear codes, take me to the library. It's the, um, and I would be like, I'd find some sort of like, they must have some sort of technology, like a handheld uh, scanner, printer thing. Do you know what I mean? Well, it's like the, um, in The Simpsons, then they do a flash forward and Lisa's president and Homer just spends his time looking for Lincoln's treasure. <laughs> It's like I feel like I would piggyback yeah. off of your yeah, yeah, yeah. presidency. Oh, then. mate, I, I'd I'd bring you in the room with me if they'd let me. Do you know what I mean? If they're like, oh, only you in can the room know where it happens. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that's happening, I'm be reading a lot of dodgy shit. Yeah, but anyway, Trump, Trump, raided, Trump got raided. His all his family's coming out and saying like, oh, my dad's never so much got a parking ticket. He's done. I mean, he's literally done an awful lot worse than a parking ticket. Yeah, and he's been found guilty of a lot worse than a parking ticket. Yes, he has. But. My favourite, and this is a line they used when he was in office, by the way, mm. and like the the Democrats would attack him or the um, 
press would kind of turn on him a little bit and he always used this on he's like no president has ever been attacked in the same way that i have and it's like bro you've got like four assassinated presidents in your yeah, history yeah. like you cannot possibly sit there and say that someone a, a, and the thing is for the fbi to raid a former president it has to have been signed off at a very high level so yeah. it would have been, had to have been signed off by the director of the fbi yeah. who trump appointed <laughs> and who would have had to have had real probable cause for the search? Oh, yeah, you can't raid. I mean, he still would have been, not, like, when they arrive at his house to raid him, they'd be like, Mr. President? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, he's still known as Mr. Yeah. President. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's a serious thing to... What do you think his, what do you think his code name but is? I think it's, like, What's It? <laughs> no. Or something. Oh, that'd be his Indian name, What's It Little Hands? <laughs> Uh, I don't know because the thing is, I think he would. The Cheeto has left the building. I think he would have decided what his code name was. Like oh, like Boris's What's big my dog. Code name. Like Boris's big dog. He'd call have been me like, the greatest. Yeah. Call me Baldy. No, call me like. Oh, it would have been. Call, call me the Donald. Yeah. Call me. Call me Great Harry. Okay. Call me Bald Eagle. No, no, no. Call me the Great Hair Eagle. Call me the Eagle with superb, immaculate, definitely not fake hair. The greatest hair. The best hair. The greatest the haired best hair. eagle. I go grow it all myself. Yeah. Yeah, he'd probably his own name. You're right, he would have overridden it. Yeah. He'd have heard them say, like, what, what does that word mean? He's like, oh, sir, it's your uh, code name. He's like, no, unacceptable. Like, wrong. Fake news. Fake news. <laughs> Fake news. Yeah. Call no, me no, the big dick. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so I've got that. That's what I wanted to just yeah. briefly talk about. Good good or bad? Because the thing is, everyone's uh, like... I mean, the thing is, the ridiculous thing is, it won't affect his chances... No, it's worrying. <laughs> what made me laugh though is a lot of his supporters were like, "This is ridiculous. If they can come for him, they can come for anybody." Like that's the point. Yeah. That's the point. Is it if that's you break the, the law, idea. no matter yeah. what level it's you're why at, why you can? Um, oh, what's the term? Impeach a president? Yeah, because there shouldn't be anyone above. No, the because law. there is no you one above. Be the law. That's a, the held theory. That's the ideal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, I think I think it's. I mean, in theory, it's a good thing because yes, he should be held to account. Uh, but it's a bad thing in the sense of it's not going to affect his chances in the no. future. No. Right, bro, walk us through, walk us through something. What have I got? I don't know. You've got a big dick energy, that's what you've got. Elliot Colburn. Tweets, right. So I've I've, oh, uh, yeah. I've gone viral. Big time. Yeah. Like you've probably seen it. Yeah. I mean, you must have. I don't need to tell you it's what happened, big, really. But we'll talk deal. about it anyway, just because I want to. And you're humble. it feels good. And I am humble. So, yeah. Sometimes it's nice when you see a big tweet like that. You want to get to know the man behind the tweet. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm here to let you behind the curtain, to let you know everything about me. What I'm honoured. About. And I feel such a weight of responsibility as yeah. almost like the interviewer yeah. to walk you through so this precious know, moment. Bro. First of all, um, could you tell us what the tweets were that went viral? Yeah, well, and the context of the The tweets. one in particular was, and to be honest with you, it's one of those like silly things where you're like, I really don't actually understand why it got any reaction let alone the level that it did and obviously it wasn't to me it's a huge level but in like the grand scheme of things it's still piddly numbers but i tweeted that um because there was a thing on sport bible about barcelona was signing another player or something obviously and i i can actually get the tweet up because i screenshotted it for when we talked about it uh, and I said, it's baffling to me they've been able to do any of this whilst owing millions to players they already have and now being in a position of needing to sell a player they owe 17 million to but won't pay him because they've spent money they didn't have on other players. Dot, 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 Barca logic. And that ended up with 1,356 likes and quite Big a few boy likes. retweets. Big boy well, likes. Well, considering like before that, my biggest amount of likes was like 50. Do you know what I mean? Like it was, we're rolling. Yeah, and actually it got to a point because I wasn't used to like, because Twitter just, you get an, uh, an alert for every single like and retweet. So my phone was just constantly like going. Yeah. Um, and I literally went, I might have to mute this. Do you know I mean, <laughs> that's, the level, that's the level you're at now, bro. Yeah. I can only imagine it. But, I've only had to do that once in my life, so I can imagine. But yeah, like, and it was... But I got some aggressive responses back. Like You've the first really one I got back responses. was one guy that was like, shut up, you idiot. Also, you look stupid or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like, mate, are you all right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Coming from an account with like no picture and just... Yeah, yeah. and that, that's one of the things I really noticed because I had another tweet and it was about... You had a um, lot of angry responses. But obviously, yeah. like 1,300, 1,400 people have agreed with you. Yes. But like maybe like 15 or 20 felt the need to... To be aggressive to tell you why you were being such a dick yeah there was a lot and of you weren't um, you were right and it shows how like blinkered people can be because it was just about football 
you know what I mean? And I know, like, notoriously, football Twitter is mental. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, the delusion that's out there. Because basically... Oh, mate, did you, can I just say, just saw this thing the other day, and I was like, I bet you any money this guy's an Aston Villa fan. I didn't even... <laughs> and as soon as I clicked on it, I was like, bang on. Because he did this best team outside the top six. All oh, right. And Buendia was in there. Yeah. And yeah. I was like, mate, guarantee this guy's no. a Villa fan. Clicked on it, Villa fan. I was like, what a fucking shock. <laughs> because there's no... And literally all the responses... Buendia just, doesn't back up that. All the responses whatsoever. were just like, bro, Ben, really? Buendia? Yeah. Look at all the other players that they could have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, I mean, you, he's an you know, all right player. You're committed to putting him in the best of the... T- you know, the yeah, best yeah. of the uh, 14 teams in the yeah. league. I could think of loads of wingers off the top of my head that could be. Well, in for there like from a Palace him. perspective, like Zaha, Zaha yeah. straight <laughs> even off the Even Elise, I'd have in over him, to be honest with you. But yeah, anyway, sorry. It's just to, just to um, point out the stupidity no, no, of right. football logic. And the basically, Barcelona are in a situation where they, as of last season, were in 1.3 million of debt, and they're in that debt because they've spent money like 120 million yeah, on like. They, f- they didn't have. On Griezmann, on Coutinho. On, I think it was Dembele as well. They spent nearly a hundred million on, and on top of that, there's all the players underneath, and they renewed all of their players' contracts to long year, like long contracts on silly money. Got themselves into a situation where they no longer had the money to afford any of it. Lost Messi, who was on a million pound a week, and you just had to lose Messi though, just financially had to lose him. Um, made or like basically forced their players into a situation where they either left, deferred their wages, or agreed to a wage cut. And we're now a year on, all of the players that had already taken cuts are taking more. Uh, PK now basically doesn't take a wage from them, apparently. Now he's basically gone down to negligible wages because they're going to give him a job oh, in like afterwards the, as yeah, like okay. the manager of Coaching the youth them, team yeah, or something yeah, yeah. like that. So, um, but De Jong who deferred his wages and was, I believe, on 300 grand. And he hasn't, he basically got That's paid 17 million 2 around. million last year. And uh, they owe him 17 million in deferred wages, which meant they would have had to have paid him nearly 600 grand a week. And the unreasonable season. thing that he wants is his money. Yeah. And they basically went, instead of having to pay him that every week, they've put him up for sale. And he's gone, well, that's fine. You can put me up for sale. But, but I want I'm my not money. leaving until I'm, I get the money I was owed from last season. And for some reason, Barcelona fans think that's think that's unreasonable. And, I'm like, and like, they've turned on Martin Brathwaite in the same for the same yeah yeah thing. for the same thing for saying yeah I'm not leaving without my money yeah. Um, and I just think it's baffling. And they've now got around it because they signed all these players. Could but that's it. Them. It's like I want my money, but I I know you had it because yeah. I I know you had access to it because I've yeah. seen you going out signing all these players. Yeah. So I know you had access to that money. Yeah. And to be honest, I don't think most of the transfers are actually that impressive. Um, no. They've spent sixty million on Lewandowski. Lewandowski, maybe I do rate Lewandowski. He's a good striker. I wouldn't have spent. 60 I think he's still got him. another couple of years in him. Yeah, at but the he's top. not a sixty million pound player. Yeah, I mean, no, I probably. I not. don't think he would be for them either. Listen, I think he'll score old, goals, but I don't. It's think that old gonna... adage of a player is worth whatever the club, the selling club, is willing yeah. to let him go for. Yeah, um, but like it just shows that like they've learned nothing. Do you they know what I mean? Learned nothing. And then what they've done to get to afford all these players and get around their financial difficulties is to sell the next 25 years of their TV rights. They've sold up to 49% of that. They have a parent company that deals with a lot of their image rights and a lot of what their casting and their production company and all that shit. They've sold a huge chunk of that as well. And they've now basically sold away half of their future income for the next 25 years. But that's the thing. They now can't afford anything going forward. Like no, they've not so got anything next left season, to what are they yeah. going to do? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, but they're allowed to get away with it. It's, it's ridiculous. Um, but it's just, it's and this is this is really like. But it's the fact that like Barcelona fans can look at that and go, "Yeah, they're doing a good the job." Sh- the shame of it was that you were limited to what two hundred and eighty characters. Yeah, yeah. Here you're not. No. Here you're free. Yeah. Um, but it seems like when I can, di- and the th- here's the thing: like, I've been getting I had another tweet last night that got like fifty likes, and I'm not. All I'm doing is saying. I think the reason. Some of my stuffs got better responses recently is because i'm not saying anything particularly controversial i'm not being aggressive like i wasn't taking the piss out of barcelona fans or the club or you were just highlighting the situation because one of the guys he responded to me was like how like you should be our financial advisor then if you want if you know so much and i was like well i can do but you're still going to need to sell players to register me on the payroll yeah no response um but like, I'm not being disparaging in any way. I'm just saying it's fucking ridiculous that they've been allowed to do it. And it is. Yeah. And it is. Um, 
And then my next one was, because uh, as I've said on the pod before, I'm going to boycott the Qatar World Cup because of deaths and just the way they got it in general, to be honest, I think it's been pretty dodgy. Um, and I think less of certain people now, like David Becker, who's taken huge sums of money to be the face of it. And um, there was You'll a... just have to shag Victoria then when it comes to your little three-way agree- agreement. <laughs> well, it's, I think it's off the table now, I'm afraid. Oh, wow, big talk. Because the thing is... Big talk. Like, it, someone said to me, well, what would you do if you were offered 8 million? It's like, yeah, but I don't currently have 80 million. So that is a truly life changing sum of money. It's not but for, for David these people, Beckham. It's not, no. No, it's not. Messi didn't need to take 100 million to be the face of the Qatari World Cup. Do you know what I mean? No. Like, they don't need to do it. He's set for, he was on a million pound a week. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, David yeah, Beckham yeah, is worth hundreds of. But anyway, that wasn't the point I was making. I had a tweet. There was a tweet um, about something to do with the Qatar World Cup. It was from someone famous, maybe, that was saying that they weren't going to... Philip Lahm. It was Philip Lahm, that's exactly what it was. The it man was who, apparently, when I was in sixth form, I looked like... Really? Yeah, I got that. Someone pulled up a, a bit. little bit. Someone yeah, pulled yeah, up a yeah. picture and was like, yeah. you look like Philip Lahm, and that was it. For about three weeks, I was Philip yeah. Lahm. A shout-out to Ben, who I think looks like Lucas Podolski. <laughs> he does look like Lucas He Podolsky. does, thank you. Even his missus says he looks like Lucas Podolski. Yeah. Good player. Yeah, very and, good and player. And left-footed. Absolutely, that was one of the reasons I liked it. There was a there was a connection there, and plus Ben just looks a bit German. Does look a bit German. Does look a bit German. Yeah, apparently so do I. But he's all man. Apparently so do I. Are you saying that? Are you saying that you look a bit German? Well, if I look like Philip Lahm, (laughs) are you saying that Germans are not man, not very manly? No, not as manly as the Brits. They don't have the beer bellies. Yeah, they do. No, they they because what they do is they work off. Their beer bellies. We are lazy and incompetent workers. So you're so basically saying all German bits. people are fit, fitness gurus and into their fitness. Is that what you're saying? It's the hill and of you're saying none it's of us the, are. It's Jake, how can you sit here dial. on this podcast, look me in the eyes and look at my body and tell me that British men are not into fitness? British men are lazy workers. <laughs> <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? Me and Liz. Well, you definitely can't run for leader of the opposition now, Jake. Damn it. You could run for Tory, though. I'm in. <laughs> I'm back in. <laughs> you know what? It works yeah. really well because I love myself and I hate everyone else. So yeah. I could be a Tory. Yeah. I could see it, you know. Tory mentality. I could see you being a dictator. I could, do you know what's worrying? I could see me being a yeah, dictator. Yeah. Like, I don't think, and, and this is where the arrogance comes into it, yeah. I don't think it necessarily be a bad place to live, my little dictator <laughs> country. No, I think, but the problem is all dictatorships end up in violence because you have to to maintain... The, the order there has to be an element of intimidation yeah. doesn't there so just every now and again you're going to have to behead someone do you know what I mean yeah but you know I think if I for example if I took over this country yeah. straight off the bat I've got like 30 people I could think of that I would happily off <laughs> so straight off the bat yeah, but is that how some... you want to start your tenure no, 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 but I've got them lined up. So when it, when uh, it comes okay. to when it, it's politically I'm like, this bellend. Oh, my support's dwi- uh, dwindled a little bit. Get Reese Mogg out here. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Support's the reason I didn't bit. say Bojo is because, you know, you can get done there's for a, publicly saying you want to kill. You know, there's a couple of pricks minister. that I know from work. Like, Allegedly. get them out. Get them out. Get them. Yeah. Do you know, apparently there's, a, there's an the area in Yellowstone National Park that is under no jurisdiction and you cannot be prosecuted for really? crimes you commit there. So that's just where I've got to take you when I've got my terminal but illness. No one, <laughs> no one has ever clocked onto it. No one has ever committed a crime there. But right. it is like legally. Yeah, but gray surely, area. like, because for example, you can in England they've passed laws now that if you go to other countries where it's legal to do stuff, that it's not here. Oh, they can prosecute. They you back can here. prosecute you anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that as well. Um, like, because it was done mainly for paedophiles, because there's paedophiles out there that go to countries where the le- age of consent is lower than ours, and yeah. So they did it for that sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. For what, real. what were we talking about before pedos? So now I kind of consume my mindset. Um, we were talking about how I'd be a good dictator, and then we were talking <laughs> yes. about the fact that Germans. Are we talking about the World Cup? Thank we were talking you. about Philip Lahm. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> You got a long way off. Ooh, wow. <laughs> we got a long way off. Wow. So yeah. So I had to wait. That's like a Ryanair flight. It dropped us so far away from yeah. the destination. <laughs> we went on a few layers. Oh my there. goodness. Yeah. You know I mean? Jesus. So yeah, there was a tweet about <laughs> Philip Lahm boycotting the Star World Cup, and all I responded was something along the lines of, uh, "Ever since I heard about the deaths out there, I knew it wasn't worth watching the World Cup." And that was all I said. I got a response from someone saying basically that I don't like 
people from the Middle East that if it was in Europe, I wouldn't give a shit. And it's like, no, I absolutely would. If that was happening in this also, country, people saying I would boycott people it. People saying you should leave the UK because the UK is complicit in some of that yeah, shit. The the, I saw a lot. Like I saw someone a lot. responded, and like, there's sort of sometimes I can get where they're coming from. Sometimes when at people the same tell time, me, like, what do we do? Because this guy was like, guy's tweeting this from his iPhone built by slaves. And it was like, yeah, all right, you've got a point there, but like, so are you. Yeah, but do you know what? <laughs> it was the thing of sometimes I get that leveled up me when I'm going on a rhyme moan or a rant and they're like if you hate this country once you leave I'm like well I would but you lot actively just voted to make that much more yeah, difficult yeah, for yeah. me so thanks yeah. for that that's kind of your fault that I'm here <laughs> yeah yeah and it's it's funny though because uh, I said to you lot I chose not to let any of like the aggression affect me because the main reason was none of them were representing themselves on Twitter none of them had their picture their name it was all. I said to you, it, it kind of shows an intent of what you intend to do on Twitter if you go on there and you think, because some people gone there really genuine, like myself, yeah. you know, and and yourself, you're like, here's my name, yeah. here's, here's a picture of me, this is it, mm. and these people that go on with like either no picture or, or an avatar picture, yeah. name nowhere to be seen in the thing, and then it's like you know they're gonna, they, you know that one yeah. of the reasons they're there. Although I have had shit. a lot of people with what, and this isn't a racial like issue, like they, a lot of like Arabic names. Not attacking you. Yeah, they they don't like the Middle East being criticised in any way, and it's a complicated situation. I know the Middle East isn't a big fan of the West, and but like, I'm just talking about fucking football, man, and that people shouldn't die building stadiums. That's not. <laughs> yeah, because it's it just it, football. Man. Someone shouldn't lose their life because yeah, it's yeah. just football. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, but there was this one guy that was going on about. Um, I've seen where they live, and it's not that bad, and. Like one guy then responded to him was like, "Yeah, but they're having their passports taken yeah, away." Yeah, they are. And he was like, "Yeah, but they can leave whenever they like. We're just holding on to their passports so they don't no, run away." That's and it's brilliant. Like, what that's are you brilliant. Talking that's about? brilliant. So they don't run away. Yeah, and he said, uh, and then the guy came back with, and I, I, to be honest with you, I didn't really engage with him because I don't really see the point. I'm not going to change that guy's no, mind. No, no, no. He's just more interested in calling me a racist than um, anything else. Because I'd have already seen on Amnesty that. Um, Qatar have had restrictions put in place and been told you have to do this, this and this and they haven't done any of it. They're just saying they're doing it. So like the people in the Middle East, like this guy, was going no but we're now doing this, this and this and this guy then just posted the Amnesty page Fair. and went, they're not doing any of it. Fair. So, um, nothing's improved. <laughs> Fair. No, absolutely. Um, but yeah, so that was like my foray into um, social media. Social media. Fame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I not a bump in the downloads for the podcast. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I thought there might be. There was a couple of downloads, but nothing like. No, no huge spike. No, no. And that was the thing. I was like, oh my god, is it like, are we going to get like? No. I was like, oh, that's no. disappointing. There you um, go. But yeah, I found like a very simple formula now we to love get the ones more that likes, to us. which is any football post from anything that has any level of credibility. That like I did one to. Um, it's normally sports vibe and things like that. And I'll just comment something very basic on it, and it for some reason it just gets blows a lot up, of interaction. Yeah. Um, and I think that's just because Twitter, football, football fans Twitter is, is just they want to engage. They're, in, they're intense. They're very opinionated. Yeah, because um, there was another one about Deli Ali. Yeah, I saw that. Um, I saw you in that because it said that he's in talks over a move to Besiktas uh, for like nearly ten million or something, or possibly on loan. And I think I just put something like, I don't really know what's caused his decline, but I hope for his sake going to Besiktas can like. Reignite the fire, his, yeah. His career. And it's funny, there's been um, this video brought back up from the All or Nothing when Jose was at Tottenham. Tottenham and he sits him in the office and he's like, you need to demand more from you. He was like, I was 20 once. He's like, I'm now 56. He was like, it was like that. He said, I don't want you to look back at your career and feel any regret that you could have done more. Because he was like, I know how good you are. You know how good you are. Do so it, I, show don't, it. I don't want you scoring. I don't expect man of the match every game. He said, but I want you to want more from you. Yeah, um, I remember. So it's that. obviously there's some sort of issue there, and like people are saying, this guy was responding saying that the parties is and all that, cocaine yeah, cocaine parties and all of this. And I was like, to be fair, there's I've seen leaked videos of him getting noshed off by someone um, and filming it. And yeah, but like, I told you not to share that video when I <laughs> when I said I've just met a famous <laughs> Premier League footballer. <laughs> No, this was uh, what appeared to be quite an attractive woman. And although you are very attractive, you aren't, you don't currently identify no, as a fair. woman. So, um, fair. My, you must have not leaked my video. I appreciate it. No, no, it was, an, it was someone. Who else was the was one who did the? Oh, it's Carl 
Carl Walker, Carl Walker the sex the, parties. The sex parties in lockdown. To be honest, from what I've heard, and I had at one point a very loose connection to Carl Walker and to, sex not parties. To, not to Carl Walker, but to a football club. And um, I knew someone who knew someone who knew someone that was married to it was very high up. the head press officer at a big football club. And they basically said, pre-season tour at most football clubs, you go to a really fancy resort, normally on an island. It's that just drugs and orgies. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And the managers get involved, the staff are in, like it, It's just a free-for-all. Who do you think would be... Fest. Okay, very quick sidetrack. Who do you think would be the manager you'd most like to see partying? Who do you think the manager <laughs> you'd least like to see partying? Uh, I think straight off the top of my head, because I think he's just a nutter. Conte has to be up there. Yeah, it'd be good. Uh, probably potentially Klopp, because I reckon if Klopp let his hair down, so to speak, I reckon he'd be quite... He'd be like... Do I could see Klopp, him being great on a night out with Scouts. Do you think Klopp treats... And I just want to say, I, like, I do like Klopp, but do you think yeah. Klopp treats sex the same way he treats football? Like, there's always an excuse. <laughs> what? He's you always, to enough. his wife, he's like... He was like, too dry. He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give yourself um, a round of applause, sir. Give yourself a round of applause. You. That uh, was that was superb. That was superb. Okay. Loud, man. That was superb. Excellent. Dog. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, because basically, wasn't it? Was it us or Fulham that? Fulham, that was Fulham, it? and then us. Um, it was a witch. There's been a witch on the training ground. What? I didn't hear that one. Oh, he just makes um, it up to me. But just to touch on that, so far. I mean, we're being linked with a player called, and this wasn't on the plan to talk about, uh, is it O-R? Oh, A-R, a- 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I can't pronounce that, no. mate. But he's a tasty little player. Did you see the video that Palace released where they got the players to do the pronunciations <laughs> of their names? <laughs> so I bad. thought that was I thought it was great. It's great. And do you know what? But dreadful at the same Mark time. Mark Gay, I've been getting that wrong. No, that's fine. And Eza, but the one, I've been calling him Eza. But it was because they did it for every player's name, so Joel Ward just Oh, went, they were funny. I thought they were Joel. funny. Joel. Ward. Ward. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get a Zaha at the end. I don't know if you saw it at the oh, end. I, I gave up. Oh, uh, it's just Zaha. Then he goes, Wilfred Zaha. Wilfred Zaha. And then he just stops. He goes, This is so stupid, man. He's like, Why'd you not do these videos? <laughs> no, but it's a good idea in terms of PR. No, it's great. Like it's great. Uh, and it's it was nice. I think they should do it more often. I think all clubs should do it because I, I genuinely um, think there's a lot of confusion. And it's, it's, it. there is the humour element to and it. And I did. See, yeah, you get to see um, a funnier side of the squad. But what I'm liking about Palace at the moment, and it's what gives me optimism, is one that we have a quite a nice, young, vibrant squad. But you see it in like the, the Palace have been doing quite well of giving us little tasters of what's going on behind the scenes we get like little yeah. clips of like their press days and we've got players in the squad now that are happy like particularly ever rich uh Eber Eza. Eze, Eza. who's just it seems like such a cat i love him like, and yeah. he's such a good got footballer and he just seems like he's always in a good mood he's always and he's vibing with, with everyone and i just love it um, and i just feel like the squad's in a in that sense we're it's in a, good a place. really good place yeah um so yeah excellent well i've just got two things i want to talk about and one Thanks i really then. literally just want to mention it is just i just want to say that um just to condemn the Salman Rushdie attack. Yeah, I, d- I mean, I, d- I, I didn't know much about him. Um, uh, Leanne mentioned him, and I sort of sort of looked it up, and it's dreadful. He's lost an eye or something, yeah. isn't he? Yeah. And they basically said he is going to survive, but he's on a long road to recovery. Yeah. And what, wasn't it religiously so, yeah, motivated? So he, so he basically, so I, I can first say I've only ever read Midnight's Children, which is a really good book. Really okay. good. Well, it, it won the Booker Prize and it won the Booker of Bookers as well. So yeah. Like yeah. Really he, he did He's a, book a called, Uber writer. He's he did like a book called The Satanic tier. Verses. And in that, he featured a flashback sequence, a dream oh, of Muhammad, sequence that was it, wasn't of it? Muhammad, like yeah. a day in the life of Muhammad kind of thing. And they don't like and that And what shit. happened was there was outrage in Pakistan where there was a, riots in Pakistan yeah. and then off the back of that the um, Ayatollah in Iran mm. put out a death threat a fatwa of promised a reward for the murder oh, of Salman Rushdie shit. now it's come out later that from a lot of close sources to the Ayatollah that he'd never read the book he'd never read the verses he had he no idea what it was he was just reacting off of the, the thing but that's a big deal a lot of people still take of it seriously it I mean, and it's that, never that officially been what we're talking about unofficially I mean, it's never been revoked direct he's telling people to harm him yeah, and, and he's, that, haven't they he come out have, and said that so they're going had, after J.K. Rowling? So he had now? to have. Yeah, but it's not even the same thing. It's not even close to being the same thing. No. J.K. Rowling's getting online abuse, if anything. Yeah, no, no, but they're threatening to he go got, after her. Oh, I don't know that. I hadn't seen. Yeah, that. I but saw. I, I could be wrong. I just saw a post that said they said she's next. Or but something. the thing, the thing about it was that I think was quite. Um, yeah, it's it's why he actually lived in under police constant police protection for a long part of his life, okay. and like his address was kept secret, private. He lived a very secret life, and he was doing this well, thing. All in because the, of this depiction. All because of, of this Muhammad. thing. All because of this book. All because of this one book. All because of the Ayatollahs. Do you know something? Fatwa. If your faith is so strong, why do you need to care? 
what someone else what does. Let awful, God judge them. What an awful. Yeah, let, do you let, what I mean? Yeah. Let God judge them. Let God deal with it. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to condemn that and say no, it's, it's dreadful. Not, it's, it's, dreadful. It's, it's horrendous. But also then sort of going off that in the freedom of speech thing, are yeah. you aware of Jerry Sadovitz? No. Comedian at the Fringe Festival. He's a very... No, I haven't heard about he's this. He's a very out there comedian and he has been for all of his career. He, he says things that are quite, you know, offensive. He uses quite offensive language. He's a bit on the edge. Yeah. And he... Basically, the, the, the theatre that he'd booked his show in pulled the show. So he did one night of the show. <coughs> he said he had, well, he had about 60, content. 70 people in the audience. None of them walked out. None of them showed any, like, real distaste. But, whoever but they was said it doesn't really represent us. Yeah. Um, so it was a lot of um, offensive language, a lot of use of words that you and I would never dare say on air. Okay. And the punchline to one joke was he ended up getting his dick out and sort of faux masturbating into the audience kind oh, of thing. Oh, wow. Now... To be fair, it's an interesting thing because I actually reacted. It's interesting because we've talked about this. Like, should should he be deplatformed and stuff before? And well, I've if he's sort wanking of gone a bit, on stage, yeah. But I've sort of gone. I've sort of gone. My reaction to this and it being comedy was like, well, as a lot of people have come out and said in his defence, like he's quite well known amongst the fringe. He's quite well known amongst the circuit yeah. of what he offers. It's like, yeah, but has you, he done if that that's before? Not, <laughs> if that kind of thing. And it's like, if that's not for you. Don't no, but go if he's see getting it. his dick out on stage, there's a problem. But especially after the first night, you can just say, look. PSA warning, he gets his dick out. Then if you don't want to see it, you don't see it. If you do, you do. I But do you think do you think the the, the I don't think there's actually the was right like, to pull it. He could do anything in that situation. He could be wearing a strap on and get that out if it's that integral to what he's doing. There's ways around it. I don't think he actually needs to get his dick out. Like just hold there, guys. I'm the punch onto this joke's gonna be great. No, no, but, but just I just wear have it, it underneath. Your, yeah. And just um, yeah, that's, fair, that's where his dick idea. is, Jay. That's yeah, the exactly idea. Of, the I just had process. the idea of him being like, I mean? wait, 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 and then pulling what? on the thing. And just Do you know like what I mean? <laughs> um, I don't. The thing is, there is a fine line between art, creativity, and then just madness. It. I feel like anyone who works on the fringes of any field always end up going too far over the line at some point, and I think that's what this sounds like. Because if they are used to him, for them to then take the step of it's, it's for me, I think the thing that, that struck me was, and this trying to be honest on this pod and trying to yeah. be honest about not knowing things and getting things wrong, yeah. is that I reacted, I immediately noticed that how I reacted to that was that's wrong, It should never. they should never pull the show, they should put out a PSA warning, offensive language yeah. and offensive body parts or whatever at the start of the show and if people want to see it, they do, they don't. Or you put it in the leaflet, I if don't they want to see it, they see it, they don't. Yeah. But I realised that my reaction was very different to if it had been someone like, uh, of Ricky Gervais or an Andrew Tate where I'm kind of like well yeah maybe yeah. we should reduce their platform a little bit because what they're saying is affecting a lot of people's lives I don't think you should be deplatformed no and I don't and it's really interesting that I reacted so differently to mm. that and with it being at the fringe My as well a place is, of expression there's an argument that getting your dick out on stage in front of people that weren't aware that you were going to do it because um, he could have easily at the start of it if he's happy no, to just get to be, his dick just out just to be clear stage. He had no complaints from anyone in the audience on that first and only night that he performed. No. I just think in today's society, you could end up like, it's not far off a sexual assault. No, but sure. But like I said... Like like we prosecute people. If if I went outside now, and I do this regularly, got my cock out and But just would you be happy if around, there was a... I'd get arrested. Would you be happy to let it continue if there was a warning on the top of it? At no. the top of the show that just went, no, this is going to happen. Because I don't think that, uh, there's ways around that. Like I said, put a fucking strap on. Because like, then it's like, it's consent. It's consensual rather than... The only way you could do that if, is if at the time of purchase, however that happens, whether it's online, like in the description of the show before you're allowed to buy it, you should have to read, this man gets his cock out. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. If you can put a warning like that out to everyone before they buy the ticket. Yeah, and if put, like... So like in the leaflet you that they give out, it any says... any person that walks up to the door, like... I think you should have to tell him then as well. Again, like by the way, this man gets his cock out on stage. Yeah. If you're not happy with that full refund, fuck off. That's fine. Yeah, exactly. But do you think in that's that situation, sort of if you can guarantee no that. one's going to slip through the net, then yeah. Oh, interesting. Just, just curious, and you thought? I just feel like that's. Uh, I'm not. It's it's not a uh, prudish thing. I don't have an issue. With, I just feel like I don't understand any context where that would. I mean, it would be funny, but not... Any context where that would enhance the joke. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know what you mean. You could have the same effect. In fact, it would probably be funny if you pulled out a huge strap on. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I would find that funnier than it. Like, I think in the room, I'd be like, why has he got his dick out? Do you know what I mean? And then you're like, wait a minute. Why have I got my dick out? <laughs> <laughs> then I wake up. How did this happen? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I just think that's a bit. No, it's fair. The only other thing, the other thing. I don't think you should be deplatformed or stop performing. I just think, like, but I don't have an issue with that club saying they're not okay with that sort of content because I don't think that's deplatforming. They're not saying no one should be able to do that. Do you think they should refund him his money, or do you think he foregoes his refund? Because you know the performers generally speaking, Uh, apart from the big performers, they they have to pay up front. I have to imagine that he didn't warn them in advance that by the way I get my cock out on stage. And but surely it's up to him what he does on his stage. I I know it's their stage, but it's up to him. He's saying I'm going to put on an act, whatever I do in it. If there's almost an unspoken contract there of like. You're paying me to come and perform. Um, I'm going to try and deliver a good experience for your audience so that they spend money. But in he's, your like I said, facility. it's quite well known that what he's like, like yeah, to fringe goers and to. There's being known that a he's lot of on the edge who, and then getting your cock out. There's a lot of stage. people who go there's, to the that's fringe. That's a massive jump. There's not. There are, obviously. How many other comedians have we heard of that have done it? But I don't know. There aren't no, any. None. I there guess. aren't any. But, like, <laughs> there's, um, you know, it's. it's a, it's a thing where, yeah, like most people who go to the fringe have been before. So they know the acts a little bit. They know the, the reputation of the acts. Yeah, and I think for the most part, people who go to comedy shows will be game for pretty much anything. But I just like, I don't know. I feel like just, I don't, yeah. There's all sorts of ways different that he could have done it. I think the one thing I would um, say... I, I think a venue has full rights to say we don't want you to expose yourself on our stage. No, for <laughs> sure. But then, like you said, so you think that they forgo their their money? Because obviously the acts pay up front for the venue, generally, and then they make their money based off how many tickets they can sell. Yeah, the fringe is different to a normal situation because he's not being paid to be there. He's paying to be there. Yeah. Um, I'd say no because I can't imagine he warned them beforehand. But like I said, I I think that it's up to him. It once he's once they say because they know he says some like does some weird. No, shit, but like. I think it feeds into this thing now because it's not just the dick. I know we're all organisations do this thing, like whether it's like a shop or a theatre or like they take this like stance as if they're an actual entity. If you know what I mean, so like the fringe as an entity can't endorse a man. But we're talking Getting about we're focused on, on the dick, but it's not just the dick; it's the, if the use of offensive language and stuff that they've also cited as reasons. Well, the offensive language I don't think is an issue, person, unless it's like if he's a white man saying the n word and things like that. Yeah, he then is. no, that isn't okay because we wouldn't be okay with that with him doing that on television. No, and I don't agree with it, but I do think that like it's in his act, and they they should never have taken his money in the first place because they know that's the kind of stuff he does. Well, if if it, if in relation to his language, like if he says the N word a lot on stage and always has, yeah, then yeah, you are in that part of it. I think you're right, but in, as soon as you get your dick out, all bets are off. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, okay. I don't it's think you should get his money get back. Opinion. Like I said, for me, it's um, just the because fact the that thing I is, am. as we know, the sort of comedians that do these sort of things know that they're doing it, and it's very deliberate. And it's it he would deliberate. have known he would have got some backlash for it. So he would, he, I'd imagine he'd have been prepared to lose. Oh, he's been money. assaulted on stage before for the shit he's done. Yeah, so he's yeah. he's well versed in it. I don't think he'll even probably take it personally. Um, no, but I do feel like I said it's quite well known. It's not hidden the kind of act. But he like, is. look, his sort of comedy will have its place, and there'll be places he can go and perform, and there'll be. But like, the thing is, everyone in comedy, and I've listened to a lot of comedians on podcasts now talking about the fringe and the whole system, and it is your gateway to TV. So that isn't the place for, it's not, like the name, the Edinburgh Fringe, is, it's supposed to be the Fringe as a comedy, bringing people in and all that sort of thing. But it's not in terms of, if you're actually on the Fringe, do you know what I mean? If you are someone who really offends and, do you know what I mean? I don't know, I, like I said, I, I think it's a place for expression, I think. And I think it's interesting that that was my view on it, whereas if it had been some of the other bigger named mm. comedians... I'd have been a bit more like, well, yeah, like, fuck him kind of thing. Yeah. Because it's kind of a... Because he hasn't got money. A smaller <laughs> act that's kind of just expressing themselves, and that's the whole yeah. point of the Fringe. One other thing about the Fringe, Matt Ford, very famous, very funny uh, political comedian, went viral with a tweet saying that someone brought a baby to his show and then refused to take the baby out when the baby was crying. <laughs> um, a lot of people going on about whether you should bring babies to the shows or not, um, and a lot of people quite I th- no. are on me were like... 
people being like, oh, well, you know, I shouldn't have to, li- you know, I shouldn't have to, like, lose my life because both like, well, don't have a baby then. If you don't want to give up the life you had, don't have a baby. It's that simple. It is that simple. Um, don't take a baby to a show. You are a selfish cunt if you do that. Cool. We're on the same page. Yeah. No, at, at 100. My, my sister's got two kids. She wouldn't dream of taking a baby to the theatre. Do you know what I mean? No. Like, it's just, it's common decency. Like, it's bad enough when they do it on an aeroplane. To trap everyone else on an aeroplane with a screaming baby is one of the worst things you can do to anyone. Like, think of what you're doing someone. Like, how long they might have been waiting for this holiday. Like, And the same for the theatre. Sometimes, like, particularly nowadays, with you people having less money. You put two, three in advance or whatever like, as well. It, yeah. It, it, it could be, like, a big day. You're like, going out every day. Well, like, I went to see Wicked recently with... How was that? Uh, it was all right. It wasn't. I like a musical. It just didn't do a lot for me. Really, that, a lot, I could appreciate. They were very talented, great singers. Um, but in terms of like, it just it didn't float boat. No, not. And I love things like Phantom of the Opera. I love Great Showman. Um, I've seen Jailhouse Rock. Mamma Mia. I like. I I do like musicals. But yeah, I like just, a musical. Um, but yeah, it just didn't do a lot for me. Um, but no, fuck that. Leave your kids at home. Agreed. Great right. place to end. Leave your kids at home. Yeah. Um, I've got one final question. Sure. It's just a light-hearted sure. thing. I heard it on a podcast recently. It's probably, I mean, depends whether it's cold or uh, not. But um, Oh, sorry. No, 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 no I know ask. how big it is, bro. Ask. Lengthy. <laughs> uh, yeah, lengthy. Um, but yeah, uh, my last question is, and it's a would you rather. Sure. Every time you wash, mm-hmm. your dad has to wash you. Yeah, no. Nope. Or every time your dad washes... You wash him, balls and all. Uh, neither suicide. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, there, you can't suicide. I can. No, I you have to I choose. Abstain. One. This is a situation. What would you choose? <laughs> it's a difficult one. I think fundamentally, I couldn't be okay with my dad washing my balls, especially considering the fact he's no longer with but us. But you'd, you'd wash his balls because he would like. There's forty years between me and my dad, so like, say this. There's more to now. wash. They're hanging lower. No, absolutely, but. I feel like you would do it if your parent was disabled. Do you know what I mean? Or if they were like... No, I'd hire someone. Unwell. Like, I would bankrupt no, myself but like to hire someone. <laughs> or I'd let him stink. So you're, like, heaven forbid, one of your parents... Beca- I, I, you know, it's not a very nice situation, but, you know, one of your parents becomes incontinent, old, feeble, all that jazz. You're like, And you can't afford to hire... I mean, I know you can. You're really rich. Yeah, but in that they, position... They've so got like, the money to get... But say my, they're parents not, are, my parents are old, feeble, incon- you know, incontinent. Yeah. Well, what can they do for me? <laughs> Why would I stick around? <laughs> no, in all seriousness, I'm not washing my dad's balls. So and I'm not I'm not I'm not letting him touch my balls. <laughs> I would sooner die. No, but you have to choose one. I don't have to choose you one. Do. I will die. No. And that is the hill I will die on. I will go up to a hill <laughs> and perform this sacrilegious sacrifice. You're no fun, man. You've got to pick one. Oh yeah, I'm no fun for not wanting to touch my dad's balls. <laughs> or have right. him touch or have him touch mine. Look, that's the whole point of a would you rather, isn't it? They're both horrible situations, and you just got to pick your poison. I mean, I like, guess which one do you think you could survive? I like? guess I'd wash him because I can do it very lightly and with like gloves. And so do you think your dad would be rough with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't know. He's like, let me get out of this bad I boy. I can control the level of contact I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. can put and a like, sponge. So how are you doing glove. it? Are you doing it just hand and a no, bar gloved of soap and, gloved or and sponge? Glove. Maybe even on a looper. <laughs> Set some distance. Because you've got to get in all the crevices. So you know sort of I mean? like, like you're going to have to lift your dad's leg up and just go to town. I don't know, just stick him on a shower seat. <laughs> just hose him down. Hose him down like prison. Get the car for <laughs> Just like prison. That's how we wash in my yeah. house. So you'd wash your dad. Prison star washing, yeah. Well, your dad will look forward to it, I reckon. Mm, I hope he doesn't. <laughs> Could you that would make things severely awkward. Do you know what the best moment would be? Is like you're doing the worst bit, right? So you're you're washing his cock and balls, yeah. And your dad just <laughs> <laughs> looks you in the eyes and goes, Do you know, I look forward to this every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it wouldn't be good. No. Highlight of my week this son. <laughs> I look forward to this every week. <laughs> Like Plus, I think it's really shit for you. You're only washing your dad once a week. Although, what would be worse, doing it in silence or him trying to make small talk, being like... <laughs> That's the point. What would you do? Being like, did you win Man United or trying to I sign? I think you've like, got to talk about something else because otherwise it's too awkward like, and it becomes this shameful thing. If you just treat it like, well, all right, dad, just lift your leg up, mate. Now, did you watch the game this weekend? I know, absolutely fucking dreadful. United is shit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
Yeah. Being like, oh, you know, they're not so good at crosses, are you? Like, so, no, they've got um, shit balls. I don't want to take Everyone out there who's listening, let us know. And Jake, let them tell, you can tell them where to let us know in a second. But let us know, would you rather, every time you washed, have your dad wash you, or would you wash your dad? Balls and all. Balls and all. And if you're a female, if you feel more comfortable, your mum, and vi- do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, vaginal. You, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, Jake, that was bad. Um, that actually made me cringe a little bit the way you said that. So I'm just say it again. Vaginal. No, that's not how you said it. You were like, vaginal. <laughs> I don't know how I said it. It was really like... I'm just getting used to my political career. Yeah, try it again. Vaginal. Mama like that. Mama like that. I mean, I hope my mom doesn't say that to me. That would make it worse. <laughs> that would make it worse. <laughs> what if your dad... <laughs> if she said what? If if you were wash if I was washing like my mum. No 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 but I mean Or even if I, I was washing my dad and my mum <laughs> stood in the doorway and went, Mum I like that <laughs> Mum I like that. Yeah, that'd be bad. I'd hate my family, I would kill myself. Yes. <laughs> what do you think your brother would choose? Don't know. I don't want to think. <laughs> Ask him when he goes home when you go I almost home. certainly won't. <laughs> All right, Jay, let them know where they can tell us. They can tell us, uh, well, mostly in your nightmares. Yeah. That's probably where a lot of this is happening. Yeah. You can also let us know. At you dream about this, do you? I will do now. <laughs> at Swords Crossing on Twitter. <coughs> at Crossing Swords underscore podcast on Instagram. Crossing Swords on Facebook. Yeah. Or Crossing Swords 19 at gmail.com. Boom. And that will be at the bottom of the screen as well. We'll actually get something a bit more glamorous to kind of like. Yeah, so I think we need some sort of sparklingness. Do you know what I mean? Like we should have. I've uh, always flares said we should. I've always said we should wear sparkling suits, yeah. full top to bottom, full Liberace, full Liberace. Yeah, yeah. I've been pushing for that for ever since. Bro, we I'm all for it. If I could get the sparkly suit in my size, just, you know, you know I'd be game. Right now, the economy is just not in a good place. No, it's, it's just not. not the time to invest in sparkling. No. It's always a good, it's a good investment, but it's just but not. I the just right don't investment have. Right I just now. don't have the money for it. No, no, I just no. No, things are tight. And that's the only reason. Well, I've heard. That's <laughs> so what your dad says when you what start watching. I was going to be beaten to it. <laughs> right, guys, we love you. Bye.